What's your financial goal? What are you trying to solve for? These are key questions that I will also ask in addition to getting the numbers. The numbers just gives me a foundation, a framework in terms of what to work with, what I'm dealing with, right? So I'm dealing with a high income earner. I'm dealing with a business owner. I'm dealing with someone that has a high lifestyle, high expense lifestyle, more than your average American, right? Most Americans across the United States are only making, say, 60 to 70,000 a year, right? It's the average. And then when you break it down into different minority groups, you'll get into lower 40s, lower 50s. If you're a single mom, typically you're doing about maybe 40, 50K a year. If you're a single dad, maybe you're like in the maybe mid 50s and 60s, right? So what are you solving for? What are you solving for? So for Farah Malik says how to make more money. Okay. Seth says, no debt first, then build from there, right? So notice how between just two people right now, between Seth and Farah, the first intent, one says, I need to make more money. So we're trying to increase the gap. What's the gap? The gap is the cash flow between what you make and what you spend, right? So if this is how much you spend per month and all you did was increase the gap, make more money, guess what? You're gonna have way more cash flow to work with than the person that says, well, I need to pay off debt first. So maybe they make this much and they have a small gap and they're like, well, if I reduce my cost of living, that's how I increase my gap. So Seth is thinking bottom line, Farah is thinking top line. Which one's right? They're both right according to their intention. What are they trying to solve for? That's what I'm doing when I'm running numbers like this. Give me the baseline, give me the numbers, give me your intent. I solve for that. And then based on our relationship together, how we work together, whether it's on a paid or, or not paid or free or just interaction like this, over time, you begin to learn some of the financial quote unquote philosophies or financial strategies that can help solve for either one top line, bottom line, or maybe you're someone that is like both. Well, how can I make more money and pay off debt at the same time? So, in this particular case study, this person is definitely a top line guy. He's like, dude, I, I'm all about increasing my value in the marketplace to get paid abundantly. But I also recognize I have a lot of debt on me right now. So I just want to make sure that the money that is coming in, that I'm managing it and stewarding it correctly, and that I'm getting the most out of my net discretionary income cash flow. So where velocity banking comes in is how we improve the flow, okay? Velocity banking is, is essentially increasing the velocity of money, the speed and direction of what, how your money flows and how it moves. Right? Most people that I meet, their money flows like this. They get paid. You're either in one of these four quadrants, or maybe you're in all of them, but you're either an employee self-employed, you're a business owner, you're an investor. You're one of these four things. So you receive money from doing a service, doing a job, committing, completing tasks. Once you get paid, where does it land? It lands in a checking account. Then from there, you pay bills. After you pay bills, there's cash flow. That cash flow, you typically, most people will see their cash flow at the end of the month, and that's where they decide whether I'm going to save that cash flow in a savings account, or if I'm going to invest that cash flow in my 401k and my Roth and my HSA and my brokerage account, wherever they spend it, you blow it because you saw the money there. It was there. You paid all your bills. Oh, I got extra money. Let me go blow it. That's how most people operate. So with velocity banking, this creates a layer where we can get extremely disciplined. This does require discipline to successfully do this kind of a strategy.